Kuwaitis on a day out with their families, relaxing and having fun on the beach. Daily life in Kuwait appears to be getting back to normal. Families are together again, and children play without a care in the world. A year ago, the scene was very different. After seven months of occupation, Kuwait city had been ransacked, the people brutalized, and a nation was in shock. So how do Kuwaitis feel a year later? I feel very happy because my country is back again for us. I feel wonderful. You see, I feel fantastic now because of the, I see the, the people of Kuwait happy again. I cannot express my feeling, you know, how I am so happy that Kuwait has been liberated. They're happy to have survived. But dig a bit deeper, and they'll talk of the painful memories that remain. The scars of this ugly war have yet to heal. A wasted landscape. A countryside still littered with unexploded bombs and mines and in the city, wrecked buildings. These are the reminders of the Gulf War, one year on. But there's another legacy, a more lasting one, and it's to be found within the people themselves. Kuwait's health minister recognizes the psychological scars left by the Gulf War and is trying to deal with them the suffering of families who lost loved ones, the anxiety felt by relatives of those still held in Iraq, the fear experienced by people who were tortured, and the trauma of women who were raped. He says the pain touches almost every Kuwaiti family, and its full impact is not yet known. Some of those most affected by the experience of war are the families of the 2,000 or so people detained or missing since the ceasefire was agreed. They've become known as Kuwait's prisoners of war and winning their release has become a national campaign. Kuwait has lists and files on its POWs, but Iraq has yet to acknowledge their existence. While Kuwaitis resume their post-war lives, the families of POWs are left in limbo. There's no certainty that their sons, <coughs> fathers or brothers are still alive and little information on where they're held. The government provides the families with aid but is in no position to do what's necessary, pressure Iraq into handing them back. Families meet regularly but the issue has yet to make enough of a mark outside Kuwait to force Iraq's hand. Relatives come seeking information and comfort. They want the international community to do more to resolve the matter and fear Iraq is keeping their people as leverage in any future talks. On the other side of town, there's a place where the psychological scars are just as deep. It's the orphanage where the abandoned babies of war are cared for. <laughs> Haifa al Gareb, who is assistant director of Dar Tufula Orphanage, says six babies arrived in January, the same number in one month as in the whole of a normal year. She won't spell out the reasons for the increase, but it's generally accepted that the babies are the offspring of women raped by Iraqi soldiers. The babies are left at hospitals or police stations and then handed over to the orphanage. No questions are asked, no details sought. Staff here take a sympathetic view of the mothers who feel they have no choice but to give up their babies. Sometimes something happening, maybe something outside her, you know. I think this may she maybe she has something in her life. Uh, everyone uh, make fall, <laughs> you know. Yeah. 
Some of the 500 women who were raped had abortions. Those who gave birth faced social pressure to give their babies to the orphanage. Counseling is available, although in this conservative Islamic society, it's difficult to air the issue of rape. There is, however, an unexpected bonus for the children of war. Not for the babies, but for the young children who were already orphans when the fighting started. During occupation, these orphans were given to Kuwaiti families to be looked after. These families now want to adopt them. It's a positive development for the manager of the orphanage, Dr. Isa Al Sadi. The changing process is because of the amount of people who took the kids and raised them and get to adopt them, there was very high. People get to know that they are, these kids, uh, they bring life uh, and happiness and could be uh, a part of the family. But the small ray of hope for Kuwait's orphans must be set in context. Behind the banners for the country's POWs, Kuwaiti society is deeply troubled. The unfinished business of its war with Iraq shows little sign of being resolved. The country and its people are still scarred by the experience of a brutal war. And on the edge of the city, war graves are a constant reminder of the loss of life during the invasion and occupation. Tending the graves gives some comfort, but it will need more than that to get rid of the psychological pain felt by those affected by the Gulf War. The experts say it will take five years for Kuwait's oil fields to recover, but no timescale can be put on how long it will be before its people are healed.